the worst thing is, is when you're pooping in public and then somebody comes into the bathroom like, shit thinks in here. And you're just like lifting your leg like. Not me. <laughs> Not me. Hey, hey, hey y'all. It's your girl, Fanita. I got a podcast. The show before the club. This is where we sit, chat, talk, and we drink. Bo bottoms up, bitch. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Bottoms Up with your local favorite sexy. She's black and she's me. I'm Fanita and this is Bottoms Up. And we have a very special episode today. It's a Christmas episode. That's right. Matt, it's not your time to talk. Can I, give you, can I, can I intro you? Okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. I have someone who is one of the first people I ever met when I got to LA. He's amazing. He has his own podcast with Heath and Zane. He's sexy. He also loves Christmas and he just got married. We have the wonderful, bright Matt King. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Matt, how the hell are you? I'm doing damn good, Fanita. How are you? I'm good. You're a vision in the sun. Oh, stop. You, you have that freshly married, like, warmth right now. Do you think I have a glow going on? You have on? a glow! I mean, look at this ring, man. This is like... It's solid gold? Uh, yeah. She's I been think a, it she's is. Been a little, she's been a pretty little penny. That's right. I mean, she did very, very well. It's a, it's a nice ring. I really do enjoy and it. And it, it's, like, simple, and it, like, just goes with, like, your vibe. I'm still getting used to it, though. Really? Because... Do you wear jewelry? No, I've never... I've been a watch guy, but I've never been a ring guy. Mm. Some guys are can rock rings and yeah. they make it look really, really good. I've just never, I feel like I have kind of like lanky fingers. Yeah. So I don't wear it that often, but now I'm like, you don't wear it no, that often. Wait, wait no, minute. wait a minute. Now I'm getting Hold used on. to wearing it <laughs> as often as I can. I don't know what the feeling is like when like taking off a bra when you get home. Yes. But taking off a ring when yes. you get home feels pretty good. Is it tight? Good. I don't know. I feel like it's been getting either my hands are getting smaller or the ring is getting bigger. But I heard that in colder weather that like ring sizes can change mm. or your fingers do. So I don't know. I was at the movie theater the other day and I washed my hands and it slipped right off. Dang. So I've been debating maybe getting it resized. Okay. Also, I'm going to just let you know right now, you're not about to be married to my girl and, and, and taking the mother mother ring off. You're uh, going to keep that mother on. When you sleep, when you shower all yes. the time. Yeah, when you wipe your ass, you shove that <laughs> ring up your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a nice ring, but I guess I'm, I'm enjoying okay. the, the married life. Are you in well. love? Like, tell me about it. Tell me about love. How did you know that she was the one? How did you know, that, like, like, what was the moment where you're like, So I saw her at a watch party. In a watch party, it was a bunch of people from college. There was a bunch of UT people, Georgia people, Alabama, mm -hmm. Auburn people. Yeah, I'm from Alabama, and his wife is from Alabama. That's right. She's from Birmingham. You, yep. Yep. You as well, so you know exactly where she's from. And yeah. so, you know. Alabama girls, they love their college football because you mm -hmm. guys don't have like a professional sports no, team. No, so college like Auburn, Alabama, Roll Tide, War, War Eagle, that's that's the main thing. And I'm and I'm from Texas. I love football, but I don't love it that, that much. much. Yeah. I'm not keeping up with the players or the coaches or anything, but I root for my team when they're doing well. Mm -hmm. I saw her at a party. She was. You saw her across the room. I did. Set the scene. Give me a what pass. Set the scene. I saw her from across. Was the there room. music playing in the background? Was there lights? No, I just think the game was probably. Oh, okay, on. okay. But she was talking to four other guys, and she was schooling them about their teams and their coaches and their players. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like the sexiest thing when someone knows a lot about something you know nothing about, yes. or they compliment your weaknesses. Yes. And she has just these big blue eyes, these big gorgeous lips, and this raspy, fun, peppy voice. And I was like, that is the most adorable girl I've ever seen. I kept trying to get closer to her, to talk to her and introduce myself. And it really wasn't happening. And then, because you know how you always, when you see someone you like, yeah, you, kinda... you don't want to go up too hot to them. Talk to their friend yeah, first. Yes, yes, yes. Get and it in, the get it in. And friend will start introducing you to them. Yes. That's the best move. Mm -hmm. I was trying to Unless do that. Unless the friend is a hating ass True, maybe yeah, yeah true if they if they find you attractive yeah then, then that's a problem yes but you gotta you gotta play it right mm -hmm. but this friend wasn't really like setting it up to yeah, introduce yeah, yeah. me to her and then my buddy at one point was like yo we gotta go our uber's here and i was like and i went up to her i went mm -hmm. up to patricia and i was like hey i'm so sorry to interrupt but you are such a light the way you carry yourself you are just adorable <gasps> i've just been watching you talk and she was like oh thank you so much you're making me blush I didn't say my name. I didn't get her name. And she doesn't even remember this moment. Okay. But I kept seeing her around town, and I always thought she was such a catch. But I was also single at that time. Okay. And I wasn't fully ready to commit, mm. but I was like, if I ever see that girl, I'm going to... Sometimes I feel like, if you know, like, even if you're not ready to commit, like, sometimes when you meet that person, you just got to 
balls to the wall. Like, yeah. you got to do it. Like, because you can't let that one get away. So there was a time where then I thought I missed my shot with her because I was at I was at the den. Have you ever been to the den? In In what? L.A. No. Oh, we got to go to the den sometime. Is it good? Great little spot. Okay. Oh, yeah. They've kind of rebranded. It's lost its charm. But anyways, I was there. And this was probably six months later. I'd still seen her around town. Followed her on Instagram. And I saw her on a date with a guy. And she kissed him. You fell to your knees. I would have... <laughs> Fell out. And I wasn't stalking, but I was looking. You yeah, know, and yeah, like yeah. you do see that person you are interested in. You're keeping your eye on them the entire party to see who they're talking with. She kissed him, and I was crushed. Yeah. Devastated, Fanita. And I then went up to her friend and I asked her, I'm like, is that her boyfriend now? And she goes, No, 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 no. She's just on a date. And I was like, Hell yeah. Yes. I messaged her that night and I asked her to come to brunch. And then it's been y'all ever since. Yeah. And I still it still to this day, I can't believe that she's my wife. And that like it I worked. got it. You got it. I got her. Can you believe it? And, and she didn't like me at first at all. I had bleach blonde hair. I had my ears pierced. I was just like, yeah. uh, I was, I was going through a phase in that mm -hmm. time. And now she's. But mine. you're always, you've always been a sweetheart, though. You've always been so nice. Oh, thank you, Fanita. Yeah, you like as well. Thank you. I remember the first night we met. We met yeah, at my where very was it? first. Do you remember? It was at uh, Stassi Baby Boob Tape release party. That's the first time we met. We, that was the first time I ever met because that was my first week in LA. It was like my first ever event. It was at Delilah, and I see you at the bar, and I was like, "Oh my god, like you're Matt." Oh, King. you're so yes. right. I was th okay. Then the second time we met was at that movie premiere. Yes, the Lena Dunham. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. That and nobody we had, like, watched. Turkey legs. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they had like a hydrotherapy. Yeah. Um, but I remember meeting you and I remember telling my friends about it because like obviously I had watched you, you know what I'm saying? I knew who you were. And also I'm not the type of person like I'm a I'm a groupie. Like I'm not gonna just play it cool. Like so I went up to you and you were so nice and I met your wife and we talked about hamburger heaven and how good the burgers are. <laughs> and like I was like He's a gel. He's great. <laughs> like Matt is not like your average like LA influencer. He's so sweet. And I was like what a great guy. And then every time we've seen each other, he's always been like, Matt! Oh, man. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I we love need it. to see each other more often. We really do. I told Zane I want to come to his house and have movie night. Come on. And then, like, and like. Well, I don't live there anymore. Yeah. But I still love spending my time yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I, I love you guys. Y'all are so fun. Oh, thank like, you. Like, genuinely. Thank you. It's okay. a fun group. Let's hop into the episode. Let's you do love it. Christmas. Oh, it's my favorite time of year. You know, I'm not like, I'm not too gung ho about Christmas. Why is that? I think it's trauma. Mm. You know, and I understand. Christmas yes. is is a tough time, especially the holidays for a yes. lot of people. And I get that. But the beauty is when you get older, and I'm not denying the trauma. That's very yeah. serious. Make, but you get to make you can your make own it, holiday. Make it, make it your own, exactly. Make it your own. I'm not going to lie. When I was growing up, I was a very big fan of ABC Family's 25 Days of Christmas because oh. they would have <laughs> banger, <laughs> banger movies. Absolutely. My favorite Christmas movie is A Year Without a Santa Claus. And it's a year without a Santa Claus. Yeah, it has the Miser Brothers in it. I, Mr. White, Christmas. Oh, the, like I, the, the old school that the claymation. one. Yes. yes. Oh, man, you're into that. Yes, that, I love claymation. That explains claymation. the trauma. Yeah, that explains I, the trauma. Those that are doesn't, great. You don't find those haunting? <laughs> no. I thought they have to throw rose. I always like the music. I love the soundtrack. Oh, uh, okay, okay. That's classic. Like the opening song, like, oh, what a good girl. And they were putting it at work back yes. then with the stop motion. Yes. I mean, the CGI these days, it just comes easy. They just <laughs> yeah. type in AI and they'll yeah, make yeah. a whole damn film. There were people working all day and on night the on set, those. Putting it together. Bit by bit. So you make Christmas villages. I do. How, do you, how did you get into that? Is it like a childhood thing? Um, Yeah, I think it was more kind of like a stone teenager thing. Because okay. I remember going over to my friend's house when I was like in high school. You're such an guy. And we would like smoke weed. And I always like loved smoking weed at her, her house because her mom always had like a really cool Christmas village. And yeah. we would just go in the dining room and just chill around the village and mm -hmm. just look at it. And then as I got older, when I finally moved. I was living with Zane. And this was around kind of like, you know, the pandemic times. and. Mm -hmm. We were going, we need a tree. Let's yes. get a tree. And they go, but wait, we have this whole credenza here. We should put something on top of it. <laughs> and I thought, oh, a Christmas village. And then I was high and I was watching Christmas village uh, movies on YouTube. And I just, I was like, I'm going to do this. Eureka! I can do this. <laughs> and I just hunted down on Facebook Marketplace because if you want to start a Christmas village, you got to get in early. Yeah. Because if you're starting in December, good luck. They're yeah. sold out everywhere. The prices go up really mm -hmm. high. So, Where do you purchase Christmas villages from? Um, okay. Is it like a Lego set? Do you have to like build it? Um, No, you really don't have to build it. The pieces of the villages are really easy. 
it's how far you want to go for like the base around it okay. and all the little details. Wait, so you build That's... like like an actual like village? Yes. Does it yes. have like people too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I get all the people, but I get a foam board and I get a wire cutter and I cut down all these little jagged little rocks and then I paint it white, add a little gray um, accent on it just to mm -hmm. give it a little bit of depth. Okay, I'm into this. I'm, I'm all ears. This, okay. And then you do the wiring and all of that. But there's, uh, you can go to like, Michael sells all the best Limax version. Mm -hmm. There's like Limax and Department 56. Mm -hmm. These are like the Mercedes and like. Uh, like Audis of uh, Christmas Vision. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So those are the brands you want to strive for. But really, you can buy them on Facebook Marketplace from somebody who. It's probably similar to me and just realize they spent too much money and time mm -hmm. on it and they want to get it off there. Do you hands. make a new one every year? Um, or yes. do you use like old parts from like your old things or do you like start from scratch? I, the past two years when I was at Zane's house, it was always the same village. Mm -hmm. But this year since I moved in with my wife, the real estate's been a little limited. Yeah. So I couldn't add all the stuff that I wanted to because I got a I got a Gravitron. Yes. Don't know I what that is. I have a Carousel. Okay. I Carousel's got, kind of like, that's bougie. Oh, the Carousel Does it is, move? Oh, yeah. It's actually, to even clarify, it's not even a traditional carousel. It's what do you call the ride where you go up in the little swings and they spin you around? <gasps> One of those? I don't know what you're talking those. about. I know you're, like they have them on carnival. Yes. Can they just give a proper name for that? Yeah, uh, I don't know what it's called. That, that that amusement park ride. So I have one of those. And then I have two skating rinks. I have a town skating rink and then I have a North Pole skating rink. So we got like Mrs. Claus and Santa Claus and the elves all skating around. You got to come see it sometime. Matt, that's amazing i know i wanted to bring it here but it's too fragile too fragile yeah too and, you, much and you're too passionate about this if anything breaks on set i don't want to get beat up <laughs> um how much time does it take you to like build it um i would say like a whole day from like sun up to sundown uh -huh. that's like this setup time do you do like elf up. on the shelf too or no no i i I, I have Elf on the Shelf FOMO. Like, I don't have a child, but... Yeah. You, I and mean, the, I'm not going to lie. The Elves on the Shelves are so funny this year. Oh, they're hilarious. I saw one recently. <laughs> the that, Black Eye? Oh, I, I saw one where it was... Uh, they made, like, uh, the toilet a cereal bowl. Yeah. Like, she put down, like, a saran wrap and then put a bunch of cereal on mm -hmm. it. But do adults do Elf on the Shelf? I don't know, but I seen one on Twitter yesterday, and she, like, she like drew on her son's eye and, like, gave her son a black eye and then, like, put the note with the Elf was like, I'll black the next one next time. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's fun. Yeah, that's I heard Elf funny. on the Shelf, though, is a lot of work because these parents have to do a bit every yes. single night. And then I seen one where uh, the elf, like, stole this toddler's panties and she was, like, distraught. And, like, the elf was wearing her panties. <laughs> elf on the Shelf was really pop. It wasn't around when it we wasn't, were It younger. was definitely not around when we were, yeah. No. no. Would you be that dad that's like, okay, this year we're beating f Rachel and Tim in, in the Christmas lights competition? You know what? That's a great question because I do think about that. Um, <laughs> that keeps you up at I night. Don't, I am not that uh, skilled when it comes to, I think... Uh, decorating? No. I love a good decorating, but I'm, I will not be a dad who has the house that's coordinated to music and all the lights yeah. and stuff. Because that's too much wiring, and I, I'm a little bit frugal. Like I'm a type of person where I'm like, we need to turn off all the lights. It's yeah. going to cost a lot of electricity. But I do love a perfectly lighted house. I'm very anti-LED lights. Yeah. I like good clouds. Classic lighting. My wife has really converted me to multicolored lights. The big old school mm -hmm. bulbs, the big chunky ones. That's that's my vibe with that I'm always doing. But I will be that dad. I'll, I'll, but I'm worried now with the village though. When I have kids, it's gonna make me the angry dad and yeah, uncle. Cause, cause cause they're like, gonna like, like don't 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 take the village. These aren't toys. Yeah. These are collectors' items. Mm -hmm. just take a step back. You should just have it like roped off. I think so. Yeah. Or I'm gonna have it like angled out to the neighborhood. Or you have so to like maybe can... uh get like something that's high so they can't like reach it and like put it on like a different like table or a shelf or something. Like build a shelf for your Christmas villages that they can't touch. Because kids break everything. Okay. Trust me. One of my, my nephew broke do. a flat screen TV. Um, but I'm excited about being a dad. You know, I have like I have a whole album on. Like, do you ever like? Uh, do you have like collections on your TikTok? Like if you see if you see a video you really like, do you ever like save it for your future self? Yes, well, I like I like like it. Yeah. Especially if it's like something in the state. I'm like, oh, that's cute. Oh, I'm keeping like tabs on all these like future moments of my life. Yes. Oh, when I'm a dad, when I'm a grandpa, yes. <laughs> like I don't even know if I'm gonna have access to all my <laughs> TikToks that I've saved. Oh, but, speaking of, do you want to have kids? Uh, yeah, I definitely do. When are y'all gonna start? You're not getting any younger. I would guess like a year and a half or two years. Okay. Because you I still want to be like young and yeah. I want to go travel. I want to go see some places uh, before you have kids because mm -hmm. once you have kids. Kids, those options get a little limited. They do, but I have like friends that have like a toddler, and they still make it work. They like she went to Paris with them. Like they still. See, and I wanted. Do you have I, a very involved family? Yeah, I would say so. And you have money, so yeah, you'll be able to make it happen. 
You just gotta bring your you just gotta bring your mom out with you. There you go. You That's gotta, you right. gotta, yeah, you gotta bring your mom out or mm -hmm. hers. Okay. Are you a real Christmas tree or are you like or fake? Now I'm a real Christmas tree guy. Is that a lot of work though? It's a lot of money. You know how much a real Christmas tree is? I do not. Well, the Christmas tree that we bought is six foot one, and this was this was across is it oak from or the is Roxy it? over there by like the Hollywood Hills, and I can see what this type of Christmas lot is pulling because <laughs> they're charging all these rich people in the hills these prices. Anyways, two hundred eighty-five dollars. Dang. I was a fake Christmas tree kid. Yeah, I, and, we always had a fake Christmas tree. And I too. remember always begging my dad for a real tree. I and now I totally understand that. You know what I like? I like white Christmas trees. A white Christmas tree? Yeah. Thing is, okay, if if you have a white Christmas tree, that sh that should be a secondary tree. You need okay. another one. Because that's like that's kind of like a front room tree. Yeah, and then yeah, you gotta yeah. Have like, you know, the, the living, living room, room tree. tree. Yeah. Exactly. A white Christmas tree. Okay. Yeah. I think it gives like classy. I don't know. I just I like it. I do agree. I do think that it does have I just a nice feel like charm I just like with the dark green it's just like kind of like ugly a little bit but then you get the ornaments going on that's what like accentuates well, yeah. it all but i feel like the ornaments are accentuated more on a white christmas tree okay because some ornaments get lost with the green especially because it's so dark but with the white christmas tree you can like see all the ornaments the lights pop a little bit more i like a green one too that has like fake white like it's frosted like it almost tips? looks like snow yes. that's a good middle ground yes that is a, that's a great middle ground okay okay so you do want kids What's the weirdest name you could present to Patricia for her to reconsider the marriage? Oh my gosh, what's the weirdest name? You know what? I even have a list of names <laughs> Please. Uh, that I have written down. And I'm not going to reveal all of them because I, I feel like baby names are like... You, no, I you, think you're good. You everybody, you everybody's naming their babies. No, no, everybody's naming their babies Dior and Chanel right now. Like, mm -hmm. you're good. Or like you're Ryder good. and yeah, Riley yeah, yeah. and stuff. But I was writing some down the other day, and sometimes I'll then. You're such a. Matt, I love you. Oh, I love you too, you're so, You're so, you're so oh, written by women. Um, what? Oh, like, okay. Grover, I thought is a cool name. Grover? And she was like, absolutely not, babe. Like, she really Grover looked at. Grover is crazy. Grover? I think it's like so classy and like like Grover Cleveland. It's kind of like old money sounding. And then okay, and then there was Orson, like Orson Welles, the director. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. And uh, there was I, I, these are ones I know I'm not gonna get it. Um, uh, Walter. Why kind of set them up for failure? I can't imagine. Hey, Walter, and he's a toddler. <laughs> like, what would you call him, like Walt? Like Walt, Walt yeah. would be a cute nickname. Walt King, Walt like Walt Disney. Walt, Walt King is kind of that might be a banger. Okay, Walt. Walt King. The thing is, King, it's a great last name, yes. but it makes other names sound really like kitschy sounding. Yes. Like I love the name Towns for a boy. I think it's a really good I kinda, name. Towns is kind of cool. But if your name Towns King, it that's like work. that's like Game of Thrones. Yeah, House of Dragons. Do you have a baby list? Like, uh, name? yes, I want to name one of my kids after my best friends. So her name is Harley. So if I have a son, I want to name him Harlan. Uh, that's a good name. That's a great name. And then if I have a daughter, my mom's name was Priscilla. So I want to name her Scylla. I haven't thought about like her middle name yet, but like Ooh. Scylla would be a great first name. Uh, and I, then I love the names. I love the name Lincoln. Classic. <laughs> yeah, I love the name Lincoln. I'll call him Link. And then I love the name Leo. That's a family name. Yes. My dad's middle name is Leo. Nice. And then if I have a daughter, another daughter, I want to name her Landon with a Y. Because I think boys' names on girls are cute. I don't know about that. You don't like Landon? No. Landon would be so cute. That's one that's a little too popular right now. I'm Is Landon to, popular? I'm going to stop you. Okay. The land Or the, the Y-N kind of thing, like Brandon. Well, because I want to well, make her, like, make it a little bit feminine. Go into an elementary school down in Birmingham and see how many <laughs> Landons there I do are. Know, there I are do know tons. quite. But I only know Landons that are boys. I've never met a Landon that's a girl. I there's I bet there's tons now. <laughs> Times have changed. It's getting a little trendy. Oh, uh, but then I haven't really thought about any other names. But those are like I think I think Lincoln. I remember I told my friends that they're like, don't name your kid. I think Lincoln is such a cute no, boy's name. And he goes by Link. Link. And I'm Link. Yes. He goes. It's like a little <laughs> bow and arrow. Me and him could be um Link and what's the other the other person's name? Zelda. Zelda. Link and Zelda would be a cute like. Yeah, unless you're going to like Comic Con every year. Yeah. Oh, that's a Halloween costume. <laughs> we would do that. We would do that like his first Halloween because then I think he would get aggravated yeah, yeah, and not yeah. want to do it anymore. So your dad calls your mom Snooks. What do you call Patricia? We don't even do pet names. You just call her Patricia. I just that call her Patricia. That kind of professional to be at the house. Because Patricia is such a good name because I, cause I love how many like syllables is in it. Like Patricia. You get it all out. And she, you know, her name's Patricia. She hates it. How so many people call her like Pat. 
Patty. She doesn't Patty like it. Patty gives like old woman that bakes cookies. Yeah. Yeah. And I think she's really, she cringes at it, but she doesn't mind if her friends say it, but she doesn't like me saying it. So, I mean, we do babe occasionally. Okay. I kind of love that we don't do pet names. If you have pet names with your uh, significant other, by all means do it. Mm -hmm. Though, so my dad will always write Snooks on like, if he gets my mom a card, he always just addresses it Snooks. Mm -hmm. For Patricia, though, if I do get have a card and I and I write to my girl from your boy, mm -hmm. that's what I do. Every okay, time. tell me the top three things you love about Patricia. Like I know um, it's probably a lot. Give, love, me the, give me the three. I love how kind she is to strangers. I think she she's treats, very nice. She's a very sweet. Yeah, she she's treats very people sweet. with so much respect because I think a lot of that comes from like because uh, yeah, her dad has like a hamburger chain in Birmingham, and mm -hmm. so she uh, she's been very used to like dealing with all different types of people and customer service mm -hmm. and treating those people with the utmost respect. I love how smiley and optimistic she is like 80 percent of the time yeah. it's such a good vibe to be around mm -hmm. it does things don't skew negative it usually turns into a bright day mm -hmm. so i love that and uh three i love how just clean she is yeah she's very clean and not only the the environment she keeps but she her is, peace oh she's yes. just i love i feel so Patricia comfortable with her home? yeah I feel I've said that many times. I feel so at home with her. And I think that's something we should always like strive seek to have for. Yeah. sometimes find ourselves attracted to people who are, I don't know, these versions of ourselves that we aren't are we put them up on a pedestal mm -hmm. when it's like sometimes you need to be with someone who you feel truly grounded at home with. with. Yes. Don't feel at someone who you don't feel. Yeah, like I don't like being around people that I'm like anxious around. And yeah. Whatever. Let's imagine a world where Patricia gets pregnant with triplets tomorrow. Woo! You have three podcasts. Which one are you kicking to the curb first? Okay, so we're picking from unfiltered, good influences, and hoot and a half. You, I think this is actually a pretty easy question for okay. me. Even though hoot and a half is my baby, it's my show, and I do love it. The reason why I love unfiltered and good influences so much is because I just get to go in and banter with my friends. Yes, and I love that conversation. Yes. I love how much people enjoy those podcasts. Mm -hmm. So I would kick hoot and a half to the curb yeah and uh yeah i would keep the other two Does, are we aborting babies in this podcast <laughs> this podcast is pro-choice hey um, I'm, I'm right there with you oh <laughs> uh, is he does he ever get exhausting like having to schedule people for three podcasts eh, no it's not too i don't i know it's not too exhausting i mm -hmm. think the beauty of doing the podcast is that i get to do it every day and it's a very fun fun job okay. so i'm always grateful to do it okay so matt loves movies what are some of patricia's favorite movies that you've shown her oh um i've a uh, parasite have you ever seen parasite yes that's a good Bong movie Joon -ho. yes that's a good she movie. had never really been into like foreign movies before mm -hmm. and we bro foreign movies and foreign shows eat they're good i agree with also you. the production level in like foreign, especially like Korean or Japanese like movies, is so much higher than like American movies. Oh yeah, that's why Squid, Squid Games was like f insane. And so many people will like be like, oh, there's subtitles. I don't want to watch Can it. Can you not like, read? Yeah, we're adults. And once you've been watching it for thirty minutes, you don't even write, realize that you're reading subtitles. Yes. You are equally enjoying it. And I think Patricia, when we first started. Uh, uh, dating she hadn't really exposed herself to many foreign films and then when parasite came out i showed her that and she was hooked on the yes. edge of her seat and i was like all right i like this girl and then i kept showing her more and more foreign films as well um what other ones that i've shown her that she really likes oh we watched that oh we watched panic room recently she loved that yeah i like panic room and oh there's another one that i think I so showed she, likes, her. She, likes, she likes like thrillers and like suspense oh yeah okay and i i love showing a thriller to like a friend yeah. and you sit them down and the whole time you're yeah. just like <laughs> It's not like, you know, when you show someone like a YouTube video, like, you yeah. think this is funny? <laughs> when you put on a movie, though, that this yes. person has never also, seen and I they enjoy it. I love movies and I love the debrief after a movie. Oh, yeah. Okay, but I'm. I'm very big. Let's wait until we get into the car to talk about okay, it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't like talking about a movie like in the bathroom right yeah. after it, or like you hear like strangers talking about Are the movie. Are you the type that talks during like, the movie? No, 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 oh, no. Oh, I do. But I'm a but I'm a firm back rower. At okay. A, a, a I'm a movie firm back rower. I only sit in the back row. Because and I'm I'm not saying I'm not on my phone all the time, but I love booking a movie at like 11 a.m. and nobody's there, and I get the back row and I can mm -hmm. just sit there. And occasionally, if you want to look at your phone, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no one's gonna. Yeah, yeah. No one's gonna see it. I definitely talk through movies because like I gotta get my jokes off. Like, uh, oh, you do talk through movies. <laughs> I do. I have to get my jokes off. If I see something, I had to say something funny. Isn't there a movie theater in Birmingham where you're like allowed to talk? 
I don't. I, we always went, you know, so me and my friends, I don't know if you guys know about this, but we, like, I'm, like, a big movie person. Like, going to the movies is, like, so fun for me. I saw a whole experience. And when I was... When I was in college, me and my friends used to go to the movies every Tuesday because it was $5 Tuesdays oh, at yes. AMC. And we were poor. And I'm talking about, like, <laughs> we did some, like, extreme broke shit. So we would get to the movies, like, early, like, midday. As soon as, like, everybody got off work, we'd stay for, like, three movies. Like, we'd just stay in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's not that's not the broke shit we did. The broke shit that we would do. <laughs> What'd you do? So we never had money to pay for snacks and drinks. <laughs> So when people would be so, you remember when AMC used to have? No, you, no, no wait. You, you remember when AMC used to have? If you bought like an extra large bucket of popcorn, you could get free refills. So you would like get it out of the trash. <laughs> we would like wait outside of the theater and wait for someone. Okay, we wouldn't dig it out of the trash. We'd wait for someone to drop it on top. Drop it on top and then we take it and then we okay hold on hold on we take the bucket we would dump it and we would rinse it out and occasionally we would take cups too for drinks because I mean you'd get a new straw we get, get a new straw, cup and we we'd rinse the, we'd rinse the cups out we'd take it into the bathroom we rinse all of the stuff out <laughs> well, your immune system is strong <laughs> and then I remember one time we went to the movies <laughs> and I did it a whole pizza in my jacket pocket. The whole pizza? And like, we, we put it in plastic bags and I had a whole pizza in my jacket pocket and I had a bottle of ranch because I had a trench coat. <laughs> where, do you know where the pizza was from? It was like it Domino's? Was little Caesars. Little little Caesars. Caesars. Oh, we were broke, Matt. We only had $5. But if I was in a movie theater, I could smell a Little Caesars and, pizza and I'd be like, <laughs> they got Little Caesars up in here? Is there but some? we used to do egregious and we do it every single time. And I was like, guys, <laughs> we'd have to get a better life. <laughs> <laughs> like we never got nachos or anything. We just like we'd be like with glasses and a hat, just like waiting outside the door for somebody to drop a bucket. <laughs> You're being frugal. Yeah, we're being frugal. I'm, I'm not gonna lie though. Is that not kind of smart? It is brilliant. That's what I'm saying. Like we would get free popcorn. I still, I still sneak in uh, snacks yeah. in the movie theater all the time because I got so much candy at home. Yeah. I always bring in the candy. But yeah, I love movies. Okay, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Um, of all time, my favorite Christmas movie is. I would say the Santa Claus. It's the Santa Claus. Okay. With Tim Allen. Have yeah, you ever yeah, seen yeah. It? I've seen all of them. That one's classic. That's a. I just. Next I do feel like they came Al out with too many of them. And then home. In Home Alone. I love Home Alone. Um. Also, I feel like only a white family can get away with le with abandoning a child in like Chicago, and nobody gives a fuck. Right. And the the dad though, how does he pay for all of his uh, and his aunts nine and uncles people? And the kids. Someone on TikTok. They went to Paris. Broke down the entire family <laughs> tree of it because there are like siblings and cousins that aren't even like mentioned in the movie. <laughs> yes. You don't even see them, but they're in. Included in it, it's been that is my Roman Empire. Yes, is how Mr. McAllister afforded for everyone and to how go to all this was going on in the house and none of the neighbors like, wait, did I just hear a bomb? Yeah, come right? from McAllister's house. And the old man who lives next door that he's scared of the entire time, who ends up becoming like the, the hero, hero. He didn't. He knows that the kid is there home alone. <laughs> he saw the family leave on vacation, and this old guy didn't even bother to call the cops. Yeah, and then I'm not gonna lie. If I was Kevin, I would put myself up for adoption. Because what the f do you mean you left me two years in a row? Right. Two years in a row? Yeah, what, how they left him yet yeah, two years in a row because I can't remember. And Home Alone 2 is like he was following the wrong person in the trench coat because he was trying to put batteries in his camera and his dad was running to the airport. It was during a layover at the airport. No, no, no. They were late to the airport because they all overslept. And but they he's had to in put, New York. How does he get to New York? No, they were at the airport. His dad is running to the airport. Kevin's not looking and he sees somebody wearing the same outfit as his dad and yes. he follows that person onto the plane. Okay. And then he drops his boarding ticket. And he ends up going to New York. Yeah, which is kind of lit. That almost happened to me one and time. And then also it's like the f adults in Home Alone 2 is like, this kid just checked in with a thousand dollars cash, and y'all are just like, "Cool, fine." You haven't seen his dad once. This is fa these are facts. <laughs> and then even like Kevin, you have two people that you know are gonna bur burglarize your house. Instead of calling the police, you're like, "I'm just gonna do some wacky hijinks and see what yeah. happens." Yeah. <laughs> it's shame on them. Shame on the McAllisters. That's like bro. the beauty of the like plots of movies from like yeah. back then, before sometimes, technology yeah, gets like, in the way. One thing I hate. I don't. I hate when there's not continuity in a movie. Like for instance, if I see something, if I'm watching a movie and I see them wearing like an outfit, and then the next scene is like slightly different, I'm like, y'all didn't check that in post. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you I just, love. You just yes. took me out of the experience. I love. You it. just like, took me out. And now I know that this is sometimes. Also, I hate watching a movie and I know the actors are acting. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. They, yes. There just seems like they're just reading from a script. Yes. Yes. And they, yes. Yeah, yeah. They're not. Wait. That what do you good. think about Saltburn? That was a. That was a movie. That was, that was a some cinema. Movie. That was a motion picture. And dare I say? 
I know y'all seen the bathtub scene. I think he was absolutely f***ing real for that. Because if Jacob Elordi came in a bathtub and I was around, I would have bit into the ceramic. <laughs> They would have had to tase me in my side to get me out that oh, bathtub. Yeah. I, I think licking the drain was just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, it wasn't that bad. I, <laughs> I don't know. When I saw that, I'm like, keep it coming. Let's yeah, see what let's else see. is. We'll see what you got. And yes. then when, well, I don't want to say too much. But yes. When, the the outside. In the in the soil. Yes. I was I knew what was weird is I knew that was coming. Yeah. Because like ways. I remember watching, I was like, wait a minute. When did you get all this confidence? And that's when I knew something was up with him. I was like, <laughs> when he like when he was talking to the mom, he was like, You're just so f***ing beautiful. I was like, wait a minute. Who, who is that guy? What? <laughs> yeah. That's the Timmy one? That movie was so great. Y'all should see it. And they made Jacob Elordi look so Stud. High. He looks so Oh, yeah. Good. When they, like, just the sweat, like, coming yes. off his neck. It's like the, de the detailing to his, like. Yes, his clothing, what he was wearing. I was, I was. They made 2006 look so good. Yes. Like, I never thought I'd be nostalgic for that 2006 in, like, Woodsy London. Yeah. Not Woodsy London, England. Just wearing like the V-neck sweaters with like the white t-shirts. Okay. <clears throat> in Texas, you can buy pickles at the movie theaters. What? Right. <laughs> what is it about the combination of pickles and popcorn that Texans love so much? Hmm, that's a good question. I think because it's like, oh, what is the combination of it that Texans do love so much? I think we just like anything big, and if you give them like a big pickle in a bag mm -hmm. for like, and it's like a buck. Mm -hmm. They're gonna take advantage yeah. of that, and I think it's nice. And like, sometimes like having a big pickle that's crisp. Oh, that crunch. Yeah. I hate a soft pickle. That's why I don't ever buy the pickles in the bag. No, 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 no. Oh, no, yeah, like nasty. the little yeah. like chip. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not into those. What, I, what is it though? It's really hard for me to like point my finger at exactly what it is. I don't know. I What's think your it's favorite just, like movie snack combination? I so what I like to do is I like to get the butt. I like to get my popcorn and then I get the butter. Sometimes I'll get a straw and I put yes. it in it, it just to make the you're, butter go a little bit an deeper. Innovator. And then it depends on which movie theater you go to, but sometimes they have Parmesan packets. I like to get the Parmesan Ooh. packet and then pour that on top yes. of the popcorn. And I like to get sometimes a little nachos, get a little maybe a jalapeno, yeah. maybe toss a few jalapenos into In the, the pop popcorn. I and love so nachos. And so it gets to the end, it gets yes. like this spicy little buttery bottom. Mm. <laughs> That's my vibe. Uh, since you watch a lot of movies, did you see The Fable Movies last year? Yeah, I did. I did see the Fablemans. <laughs> oh, what, what, are you a big Fablemans fan? No, you know? just, just wonder if you see I it. I did see the Fablemans. <laughs> uh, very, uh, very interesting plot. A lot of familiar characters in that movie. <laughs> uh, when Matt was in high school, he accidentally squirted bleach in his eyes. How did that happen? Okay, I was at my friend's house. I spent the night, and I woke up, and my eye, my oh, I slept in with my contacts, and my eyes were killing me. And so I opened up my friend's nightstand. And that happened to my friend one time too. He picked the wrong thing. He thought it was his eye drops and he poured like something crazy in his eyes. Well, this said Visine on it and I pick it up and my friend's still asleep. I put it in my eyes. It starts burning severely and I wake him up and I go, what, what my eye? Like, I was like crying. I'm like, John, what the hell is happening? My eye. And he goes, you didn't put that in your eye. And I go, I did. Why? He goes, that's bleach because he was on the baseball team and he was scared about getting drug tested. And when you uh, apparently get drug tested, if you put in like a few drops of bleach, it can like make you not test negative. Yeah. And so that was his drug testing drops was, was the yeah. Bising bottle filled with bleach. So I poured it all into my eye. And I remember crying even more because I was – because he didn't want me to like tell his parents. Like I was about yeah. to like call an ambulance. He was like, no, 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 don't because it just – it's going to look weird that yeah. the bleach in the bottle. But I'm like, I know, but my eye. <laughs> I thought my color was going to all go away yeah. and my entire eyeball was going to be white. So mm -hmm. I was severely crying. And everything turned out okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> okay, you won an outdoor barbecue set on Let's Make a Deal two years ago. I won it in the first round, but then I risked it all for the big deal. And you lost it. I, well, I lost it, but I ended up winning another prize. So the way. Did you know that I won the prizes, right? I won the you whole, were? I won the whole showcase. Get the f out of here. And you know what's crazy about my Price is Right uh, time? So it was last year, again, when I first moved to LA, I got on the Price is Right. And. Um, it was the last round because I was doing horrible at guessing. I guess I guess I didn't know how much anything cost. Were, were you doing homework at all? Like before, no. were you just, I was just like I was going, going through vibes. catalogs? So and... it was the last round, and it was the last round of guess to play. And it was a Mac, AirPods, and something else. And I like listened to the crowd, and I said a number, and then like he was like, "Okay, you won." And so he picked me, and so then I go on stage, and this is when I was overweight, a lot overweight, and my first like guessing thing is a home gym. Right, and I was like, "Oh, y'all trying to be funny?" 
the f*** y'all trying to say, PBS? <laughs> don't, don't be trying to crack jokes. I, I don't find that <laughs> too funny. And so then I was listening to this one guy in the crowd because I was playing like high or low. You had to like guess a bunch of items that couldn't go over the like total whatever. Okay. And so like I was listening to this one guy in the crowd who I guess was like a Price is Right expert and he was right and I just listened He's to everything. He's sitting there with just a laptop <laughs> yes. like. And, and he's piecing me <laughs> in. Okay, I won the home gym. So then he goes to the big, it was it was such a game of luck. Then he goes to the big spin where you get to go to the showcase. The two people in front of me overspun so I I won automatically. Whoa. <laughs> so I went by default and so it was a big showcase. It but was, did you get to still spin it? Yeah, I did get to still spin. That's yes. got to be a very cool moment. And then at the showcase, it was a car, a ping pong table, and uh, like a like a Roomba vacuum cleaner. And the other option was a trip to Bali and a motorcycle. But I like passed that. <laughs> yeah. So then I won the car. Then I won the home gym. I won. I won all that stuff. Yeah. Do you still have the car? No, I sold the car and got you, the check for it. You won a car on the Prices Right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about your that's barbecue the, set. That's the no. American dream. <laughs> Congrats! I gotta find this episode. What year yeah, was this? This was. It came out. Uh, duh, 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 duh. it came out this June. Wow. Yeah. D oh, were you dressed up as anything? No, I was just wearing. I, I didn't think it was gonna like. I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't know if I was gonna get to play or whatever. So I kept it like low. So I was really wearing like t-shirt and yoga pants. Like I was just. But I have like a big personality, so I was just like, you know. Look at us. We both won big on game shows. Wait, wait. So did you did you risk it big for the? I did risk. So yes. So what happened was uh, there was like a first game where I had to like uh, put my hand on a wishing well and pull out these coins, and it was like door number one, envelope, something else. And he goes, Matt, what do you want to do? And I'm like, door number one. He goes, what if I give you five hundred dollars? I said, no, door yeah. number one, thousand dollars. No, door number one, two thousand dollars, Matt. I'm like, no, door number one, open it. They open it up, and it's the outdoor dining set that was worth uh, eight thousand okay. dollars or something like that. So, but in my, I know it was like a nice one. Like they would have to come cement it in. But in mm -hmm. my head, I'm like, that's not gonna I, work. I, that's not gonna yeah. work. So I knew what the price was, and then all the other people kept playing their games. If you have the prize that is worth the most, you get to risk it for the big deal mm -hmm. at the end, which is door number one, door number two, door number three. All of them are prizes. One of them's really good. So yeah. you're not going to lose. And I was like, shit, okay, let's go for the big f deal. Mm -hmm. I do it. And then uh, I picked door number two. All I spent all night staying up watching every episode mm -hmm. of Let's, let's make, make a deal. deal. But let's make That's a deal. That's my favorite game no show. That's the game show that I've always wanted to go on. Yeah, there is. But the thing is, there is no strategy on mm -hmm. that. There is no knowledge or yeah. instinct. It's pure luck. But I watched so many episodes and it always felt like door number two was going to be it. I said door number two. They open it up and I won like a like 90 inch plasma screen or OLED yeah. Samsung TV, mid-century modern credenza. The prize ended up only being worth like $4,000. So I kind of lost money. I have the biggest TV in the A game. 90 inch TV is crazy. Look at us. We're just game show superstars. It's really not. Every day I look at it, I'm like, okay. I won that thing. You're also a Jeopardy expert. What about trivia excites you? Um, Because it's finally taking all the knowledge that you've accumulated in your brain and putting it to use. Because I, I don't feel like I was a good student. I, I'm very curious about the world. So I'm always yes. like researching and learning things and i just love any type of occasion where i can yes name three countries that start with the letter y uh yemen uh why is there another what other country has starts with a uh, y Yukon, uh, oh the ukraine no, no you yukon <laughs> wait is yukon a territory is that a country yukon is a territory we're in flying in from the producer it's the yukon and then y uzbekistan is that a word it, no is that it, a country is it uzbekistan <laughs> Do you remember the the Disney Channel movie, My Stepsister from Planet Weird? Did you ever watch that? I don't How think old so. are you? I'm 25. Ugh, How old are you? 31. Matt, you're 30? You yeah. look good. Stop. I thought you were like 26. Really? Yes. 30 is doing you good. Can you talk to me about the poop party you had in London? Uh, The poop party I had in London? Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, I was at a club. Yep. Is this what it was? Yep. I was at a club. Yep. Because when you're traveling internationally. And there was no and toilet you're paper. you drinking so many pints. Yep. And there was no toilet paper. And I had, and it was code red. Mm. Like it was one of those situations where, it was gonna to come where out the butt, like, you realized you had no toilet paper and you go, I'm going to wait until I can move into the next stall and use that toilet paper. And then I went into that stall and there wasn't toilet paper. Next stall, no toilet paper. And it was so, so it was did you have to like red. text and Patricia, Patricia, but she wasn't answering <laughs> and i'm sitting there calling her answering booty and so all then i had to do a full like i'm talking about this was messy i there was a moment where i debated 
um, taking my underwear off and, and wiping it and wiping that and then throwing it away. But then there was like a bunch of these, you know, London hooligans like just hanging out in the bathroom and they're going like, <laughs> to see me dispose of this shit. And so I had to go down, clench my thighs or all together and it, yo, it was bad, guys. So I, had to throw, I had to throw away the pair of, of jeans because it was like because I didn't have access to a washing machine. Like it was like farewell to those jeans and we had to go home. So uh, but, I, I assume that you and Patricia didn't, you know, y'all just went straight to bed that night, huh? Yeah, we did. <laughs> but it brought us closer together as a couple, you know? I think that's what like romance the, the, is all the about. You f holding your ass, you just get out of the bathroom. I remember, yeah, people were like coming up the stairs and seeing me. It looked like I had just, I don't know, my kneecaps removed. It I feel like I feel like they should make something when you're in foreign. I, that's why I'm scared to go to like Europe because I feel like the food there just because I got I got like a sensitive tummy. Like I get this like all the time. So like one wrong yeah. move. What's the uh, emodium? Is that what you need Does to Does it take? have lactate on here? Lactate. Yeah, take yeah. lactate, emodium. I think that helps, but it was What's, a rough situation. That's crazy. What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Weirdest thing that I've ever eaten, I would say, you know what? I've ate I've ate a lot of like bugs and stuff. I feel like for videos and stuff. I've eaten I've eaten maggots, I've eaten crickets. I've eaten a lot of crickets. Have you ever had a cricket? I'm black. They're not <laughs> they're not that bad. <laughs> oh, and like is that a very white person thing to do is eat crickets? Yes. <laughs> Are you Bear Grylls? Yes. That's, uh, <laughs> that's an extreme, extremely white thing to do. Should, I love Bear Grylls, by the way. Crickets are not that bad. Like, uh, you get them in a bag. You get, they have a bunch of seasoning. You can eat them. They're kind of crunchy. It's like, what I'm not eating like? a cricket off the ground. Uh, like, sunflower seeds, but, like, kind of almost hollow, kind of. Yeah. Or they taste like, um, you hollow know, like popcorn <coughs> or, like, Popcorn kernels, but like the skin of popcorn kernels, right when you get You're down to the end of a. You're making me sick, Matt. Oh, it's not that bad. You're turning my stomach. I have to get her some eyes. crickets and have her eat them. Again, I want to reiterate that I'm black and I'm not eating <laughs> crickets. <laughs> have you ever pooped on a plane? Uh, I mean, I have. You're disrespectful. But I don't. I, but Pooping on a plane is actually because we all got to. I was talking about this yesterday. We all have to smell that. Shit. The cabin pressure in the air, oh. it fucking sifts through the. I'm anti pooping on a plane. Uh, but you but pooped like, on a plane. I, I you have, should have held that shit and I landed. Ha I have. But I, I think toilets have gotten better. But like what I also hate about uh, pooping on a plane is like I don't trust the toilet because sometimes it's like you get one of those ones that just have the flap. And sometimes yes. the poop can go on the flap. And then it like it will go down. But then it comes back up. up yeah. And the poop's still there. And then you got to like let somebody else go in. And yeah. you want to be like, well, that wasn't me. That was the, <laughs> that was the person I before take that this. Can you believe? <laughs> That? Well, well, guys, guys, is there a ghost inside this Ooh. bathroom? Maybe who just took a shit, guys? Ooh, what? Do that. I literally just walked it, bro. Yeah. What? I, but I think there's something in my. I usually rarely you ever poop the, on you a know plane. What, you know what the worst thing is? Is when you're pooping in public and then somebody comes into the bathroom like it stinks in here, <laughs> and you're just like lifting your legs like. <laughs> Not me. Not me. <laughs> Not me. I, it, all restrooms need to have elevator music in it. Yeah. Like, I also I can't stand hearing people poop. I feel so embarrassed if if because I don't even know what's gonna come out. But yes. like, especially if it's like a little. <laughs> I have to like sometimes I'll turn on like brown noise on my phone yeah. and just or just blast TikToks yeah. and just get any sense of of a sound barrier. Well, sometimes it sounds like the Tasmanian devil. When I'm <laughs> <laughs> what is the sound? <laughs> uh, so speaking of planes, I heard you experience a lot of weird stuff on planes. What's been the weirdest? Uh, seeing a woman smoke a cigarette on a plane. Like light the bitch. Yeah. What? Which is like something you you know you always like see the signs don't smoke don't smoke. You're like who would ever do it? I was taking a red eye from Miami Think to you can LA. Smoke a cigarette on a plane incognito is hilarious. And we were like you know halfway on our way back from LA and just and it was like in the middle of the night all of a sudden we just smell like cigarettes and you think like oh does someone just smell like cigarettes but you're like but we've been all sitting around each other this <laughs> entire time and then I look over and two rows up there's a girl who's in the aisle seat and she's on her phone and she has like her drink out and she's just <laughs> smoking and you're like that can't be, is that really happening right now? <laughs> the flight attendant then booked it right down the aisle and went up to her and snatched the cigarette out and just put it right in your drink and goes, what are you doing? Yeah, as you should. What are you doing, man? <laughs> That's crazy. And I kept my eye on her. I was trying to see like, was she drunk? Was she on drugs? I think she was drunk and she forgot, and because it was so dark on the plane, I think she like, Forgot she was on a plane. Mm -hmm. She was. Uh, it was just she's too much of an addict. She didn't even know where she was. Yeah. 
But sometimes life is hard, man. You need to just smoke a cig on a plane. I kind of get it, man. It's kind of bad. Yeah, it's kind of like. I'm I'm as much as I was disgusted, I walked away with that story, and I'm like. Thank you for it. Because they even, they put ashtrays in the bathroom because they know people are going to do it and they'll have to mm -hmm. pay the fine. Yeah. But I feel like you should be put on a no-fly list. Yeah, though, I, I definitely think. I'm not going to lie. There is nothing that, because sometimes, like, sometimes people on planes make me want to snap their necks. They're so, because I've been traveling a lot more, uh -huh. and there's so much that people do that just irritates the f*** out of me. And also, when you're at the airport slash on a plane, you get to see, like, the li like the live low IQ of human beings. Oh, big time. Like, for instance, I landed um, Saturday from Miami, right? We haven't even got to the guy terminal where they're letting off foot. We're still moving. This girl immediately jumps up to get her to get her suitcase down. The flight attendant is like, hey, can, can you sit down? Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and then when people <laughs> immediately rise as soon as the plane stops, like, first of all, y'all, this isn't going to turn into a hostage situation. Right. We're all going to get let off the plane. I'm always just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting until, like, like the last gonna, minute. This, and this then I'm gonna... freaking out that I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I'm just like. <laughs> or, or, like, if we're in the TSA line, you know you need your passport out. Uh -huh. Why did you wait till you got to the window to get your Oh, Why are you I'm, fumbling for your boarding pass? And I I'm remember this you. one time, I almost choked out this woman on a flight, bro. So I was, like, mad tired, and I was in the middle row wanting to kill myself. And you know how, like, uh, the the back of the plane has, like, the trays you can let down or whatever? Yeah. I was I let down the back of the tray, and I put my head on it. You'll never believe what this was. She slams her head back. Oh. <laughs> and she knew that you were trying yes. on the she tray? She slams her head, like, like, rams her head back. So, And I'm like, are you Okay. Are, oh. are you are you are you insane? Oh yeah. Like you don't own the what back of the train. What did she say? What did she say? She was, you know, she she was, you know, a different color. So she just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, do we have a problem? What is your yeah. problem? I was slapping in front of your kid. Like, you better be glad I love traveling because sometimes my patience wears. <laughs> I do love a good freak out though when I see one brewing. Yeah. And someone's getting angry. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Is but that, gonna, I guess don't as long as it be. doesn't affect the delay. If I'm getting delayed because of your yeah. your actions, no. But please, if you wanna if you wanna mouth something. Oh, and then off, one time this lady, it. oh my god, this was sick. I remember it was uh was it on a red eye? I don't know. It was late, and the plane had just, it was a uh, a flight from New York back to L.A. So it was like six hours or five hours. We're two hours in. Um, and I had my hair. You know, my hair was really long. And um, the lady behind me tasked me. She said, "Baby, move your hair. That lady just threw up." I said, "Oh." Uh. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and she like the lady next to her just vomited everywhere. Mind you, we like, have no, three hours. The bag. All not even it. had a bag. Like she threw up all <laughs> over them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I was like, get me the f <laughs> off this flight. Oh like, no. I gotta have to be on snakes on a plane. Like, bro, cause some people <laughs> some people have like no home training and no decorum. Why are you bringing a seafood boil on a goddamn plane? I think that's <laughs> another one of my Roman empires. You've seen that one where yes! like they have the full seafood wait, boil wait, wait, wait. in Did the... you see that insane video of like this like country like white dude with a with a beard? He snuck like he made garlic, parm, mashed potatoes, and shrimp on the plane. Oh. Like, he brought, like, this, like, it was a whole, like, system. Brought frozen shrimp and instant mash through TSA. Got on the plane. Filled up the sink with water. Had this little con contraption that, like, heated the bowl up. Like, Wait, had a battery. In the airplane. In, in the, the airplane, airplane bathroom. Oh. In the airplane. He's, like, mixing it up and, like, like mixing it with his hands. Puts it in the, get, scoops out the mashed potatoes. Is he dumps filming it. this himself? Or yes, he's oh filming himself. Oh, my god. He has some, like, little battery with, like, plugs and shit. And he dropped it in the water and it made the water hot. Cooked the shrimp in the airplane bathroom sink. I have to see you, this. It was, they were, like, it was on, it went viral on Twitter. Like, put him on the no-fly list. <laughs> <laughs> like, put him, like, he made garlic and then was just, it went back to his seat and just was eating it. <laughs> He made it in the sink, the airplane sink bathroom. With the airplane sink water, though? Yes. Like, isn't that like a yes, big no-no? Yes, -no? he, he made it with the airplane sink water. I, have you ever drank out of the airplane sink no. water? No. I didn't know I that was a bad anything. thing. I've never done but one time I almost did. Like, I had an empty water bottle because I was so hungover on a flight. And I was like, I just need to go use the restroom. I need to fill up this water bottle. She goes, Do, you, no, sir. No, sir. She goes, I'm going to bring you a water bottle. She like, yeah. was like, dis and I was like, oh. I didn't know that you can't. All right. So we're going to play a new segment called The 21st Date, where I skip the that nobody cares about. We're not going to do any small talk. We're going to get to the who, what, when, where, and why that made Matt King, Matt King. And Patricia, girl, I'm not trying to step on your toes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we know you big doll around here, but let's just pretend. Are you ready for our 21st date? Bring it on. All right. Matt, Devin Rogers, who is that? Oh, my gosh. Devin Rogers. 
Devin Rogers was a, a kid that I had a, a group project with my senior year, or maybe it was my junior year, and it was a group project, um, and it was for a media class, mm -hmm. and everybody had their roles of what we had to do for mm -hmm. this project, and this was a class where everybody was struggling. We all had C's, and we had to pass this class because we needed it to graduate, and this guy's job, his only role in the group project <laughs> was to turn it in on time to get it printed and turn it that in. was his only role yeah and so we it's the day of where we're turning it in he's like yeah i'm going to the printers i'm turning it in blah 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 and he told us that he turned it in and then the day the grades get posted we get a, a c on it and we're like how how did this happen he didn't turn it in on time. That's crazy. And we, and then I had to stay up late mm -hmm. and cram for the the makeup final, which is like the cumulative study yes. of everything you learned which, all which year. Those are you expect me to remember something that we learned five months ago? Oh, I was. It was the only time I've ever called like a helpline. Yeah, you called the hotline. I wasn't like debating on like unaliving myself, but I was so <laughs> angry, and it was so late at night. Everyone was asleep, and I just needed to talk to somebody. <laughs> invent about it and i remember the person on the helpline was just like buddy just get it together yeah like you it, this is your own you, you, you have were to high do school. it i was like you're right so like that oh yeah i will always forever hold a grudge uh, yeah. to that kid every time i'm in austin i'm always like looking out for him just to be like you I, owe I me a drink yes every time i see you you're buying me not just one or two beers you're buying the whole tab for me for the rest of the i evening. hate it i hate it group projects i remember this one time i had this friend uh, so it was like it was like four of us in a group project, and it was for public speaking when we were in college. And two of the people in my group hated each other. Oh, like and I was friend like I was friends with everybody in the group, and I was friends with the guy and the guy and the girl like Megan and Tyler. They hated each other. So like the first meeting we ever had to like do the group project, Megan and Tyler started beefing. So Tyler refused to come back to the group meetings. <laughs> and so it's day of the group project, and I'm like, bro, Tyler, because he was my friend. I'm like, yeah. bro, please, you cannot. <laughs> Us. You cannot f us. And he came in and blew it out the water. <laughs> like he was like he came like do like a f you to Megan. Like. <laughs> but also, I always felt like our public speaking teacher had a thing for him. Because let me tell you something. I'm a great public speaker, obviously. I'm never really shy, and I would have like immaculate. I was always like I was always ahead of the curve. Yeah. Like she would never really have any critiques for me. Anytime uh -huh. people would write notes for my like public speaking, they'd be like, "Girl, you're you're great. I don't really have anything to say." So like one time I did a public speech about diabetes because my aunt had diabetes and we had to do a demonstration. So like I pricked my finger how to like take blood and everything. Nice. And then um, it was a great did all my research on having diabetes and it was a great public speaking because I always made eye contact. I memorized my speeches. Tyler does his. His is like some like his his is cool. Like he does like how to like trade stocks, or whatever, and he like plugs it into the phone and has like whatever. And for the first time ever, he got a higher grade than me. How unacceptable. And I was talking to the professor, I was like, oh ma'am, you made a mistake. I got a I got a I got a 94. Tyler got a 98 somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made your pen slipped on the grade book. And she was like, No, Fanita, what I will say about you is that you are an amazing public speaker. You're you're great and you are you are amazing at what you do. However, I just felt like you should have talked about something you were a little bit more passionate about. Bitch, was that the assignment? <laughs> or was the assignment to give a demonstration? It's always a Tyler. Yes. It's always a Tyler that the teacher has a crush on. Yes. Like when and people like, do those Tyler, like TikTok Tyler bits, would like, give like half ass, like public speeches. Like he would look at his cars the whole time. It's okay, and, Tyler. And and he would get an A. It's it, always if, you, a Tyler. if your pussy needs eating, <laughs> just let me know something. Just let me know. But okay, but I hated group projects. Also, I hated the people in group projects that like rated you seriously oh like, right when you have to grade your peers yeah like give me a hundred please don't make me jump you in the calf after this i can't believe they allow that yes. like you know you're the teacher your job is to, like grade yes. like why are we grading each other we're doing your work for you yeah and, and then like the people that be like yeah i'm not giving them a good grade like you're a dick sucker yeah like, this won't matter in five years like what mm -mm. why are you why are you literally being like a snitch <laughs> Okay, you got your high school teacher fired for drinking on the job. I did. I what? did. I got my Spanish teacher fired. It was at 7.30 in the morning. She was a very bad Spanish teacher. I had friends who, um, and we were all struggling. We all had- So you don't feel like anything you did was wrong? You're was, proud of well, this. Hold on. It was your taxpaying dollars paying for this teacher's salary, okay? And everyone in the class was struggling. And even my friends who knew Spanish was like, she's teaching us the wrong conjugations. This lady yes. isn't good. You know, she's just like a white lady who studied abroad one time in yes. Barcelona and just <laughs> has made a whole career out of it. And we could smell alcohol on her breath. 
We distracted her. Uh, one of us went up and we smelt. She had this water bottle. She would always hide behind her computer yes. monitor. And we were like, why don't you just put your water bottle out right here on your desk? <laughs> yes. And why are you we hiding it? Hot. We sniffed it. Straight up wine cooler. We all went uh, to the principals, wrote our own de depositions in like different <laughs> rooms on a piece of paper. And by the end of the day, uh, apparently the cops were in her room and we never saw her again. Good. And all of our grades went through the roof. Good. We got uh, it. And it was like a, we had a sub the rest of the year. We would just watch movies. And uh, yeah, uh, my Spanish is terrible. Yeah. But my GPA was higher. Yeah. And you know what? It was your tax paying dollars. So yeah, was I a snitch? Yeah. I guess I snitched. Yeah. Sometimes, I sometimes snitching comes in handy because when I had Spanish, I remember like Spanish two, Spanish one was fine. I love my Spanish teacher, and this this incident had me hated by all the teachers and <laughs> the school that had kids in my class. Uh, okay. Okay. So it was a Spanish two final. I had like an eighty nine in the class or a ninety, and I was You're like, a good student. Yes, I always like I always made good grades. Like, I was top ten in high school or whatever. Um, the top ten students out of or forty. So like, don't don't. Yeah, oh, don't okay. Do hey, yeah. that's still great. <laughs> See, Matt, you don't ever diminish my accomplishments. <laughs> so I was always in like you know like Mula Theta, the Beta Club. I was always like one of the top students in my class. So I had a really high grade. I had like a like eighty nine or ninety, and the final was coming up, and I just didn't have time to study for it. So I was like, if I bomb it, it'll be fine. I had never had a C in my life. Like never had a C in the grade book. I bombed the final i'm talking about i made a 30. Ooh. i went to miss navarro on my hands and knees because she put it in the grade book my grade was like a 79.4 and i was i was on my hands and knees but thankfully everybody in the class failed the final okay. like nobody passed so there was so, like a margin of or, yes or, yeah, so yeah. like all so i had a lot of kids in my grade whose teachers worked at the school so like we were all complaining that, that like the final was too hard and whatever and my school was white so you know white people win and <laughs> Miss Navarro wasn't so like they all like basically like ganged up on her and she taught at a different school our neighboring school too and like her that class had failed the final too so like she was like okay I'll I'll scale the final because I failed so bad my grade went up a lot higher than some of my peers so I ended up getting an 80 and because so many people failed a lot of people ended up getting kicked out of the beta club that year because of Spanish but I didn't. So Ooh. school year ends. I get back to school, completely forgot about this. You know what I'm saying? I'm just happy as a clam. I don't have a seat. Yeah, yeah. I'm still in the running for the top 10. And my history teacher comes to me. This is this is legitimate. Like my school was like, it was bad. He comes to me because his daughter was in my class. He's like, why the f did you get a higher grade? Why are you the only one that's still in the beta club? And I was like, aren't you a teacher? Don't you know how a scale works? Like, because uh -huh. he thought that like, a lot of teachers, a lot of the parents thought that, like, she just gave me extra points. Oh. But it was just the scale. Dude. And they were all, like, pissed. They were all pissed at me. Oh. Yeah, like, they had the pitchforks. Like, because she doesn't you. deserve, she, she should be kicked out like the rest of our kids because, like, da, da 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 But it's like, hey, can't beat the math. <laughs> 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 hey, take that up with Miss Tomorrow. But, like, they were dead mad at me. Okay. You had an ex that kept using your lift after you broke up, and why? And how did you catch her? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure of this, um, uh, because I kept. Because you know how sometimes you'll get like you know your Apple Pay or charges will come in. Yes. And then you're like, oh, but it will come in like a day later, yeah. and you're like, oh, I guess that's what the lift was the night before. Yeah. And luckily, my mom pointed out on your my credit card. I don't even know why my mom was like <laughs> following uh, my expenses. She goes, you're having so many charges through Lyft. And then I realized that my ex still had my credit card and she was using it to uh, pay for all of her rides, That's probably crazy. around New York. But you know what? And I'm talking about like two thousand yes. dollars worth. of. You should uh, take her to a small claims court. But I've like I just didn't want to talk to her like ever again. Yeah. And I never addressed so you, it you to just, her. You just charge it to the game. I just charged it to the damn game because yeah. I just didn't even want to get into another fight. Yeah. And yeah, still still to this day, I think about that. Like where I'm like, damn, there's <laughs> some money that is not accounted for. Yes. I see something that me and you have in common. We both dissected cats growing up for anatomy. Isn't that wild? That's was insane. Was that a southern thing then? I think it, because I, I said that once before and people were like, what? And I was like, yeah, they would donate cats. Because I, I dissected like a goat lung, a frog, and yep. I dissected a cat. Like yep. a whole like dead like it feline. Ca they came in bags. Skinned, the, yes. The, the, the science teacher would pull in a full cooler. Cooler. A cooler of cats. Of cats in bags. <laughs> and bags. And we would take the cat out of the bag. Yeah, and we would dissect and it. we would cut it up. Yes, like, and I remember. And the fur. And the thing is, I loved cats. And then some of the cats would be pregnant. 
Oh, oh, wait, we never had any of those. Oh, yeah, some of our cats would be pregnant. Oh, my god! I don't think our cat was pregnant, but I just remember, like, like sticking the, the scalpel down, like, the rib cage, like, opened up, like. Oh, and you have to hear the bones like, crack yes, and stuff. And, and then you're, like, cracking the bone. Like, it was. And it was tough. I had, like, uh, he said, like, if you guys don't want to do this, you don't have to do it. Oh, no, it. like, my science teacher was, like, she was, like, like, Miss Trunchbull. Like, she, oh, she was, like, make, oh, pick up a scalpel yeah, like, and get she to literally, She literally <laughs> took the cat out of the bag, threw it on the table and started it. Got Cut it up like a hibachi shell. Oh, like, and, and uh, then, but like I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of like cool. I agree. There it was, was really a cool. moment where I was like, "This is it's so fun. real. This is so serious. People have to like operate on cats yes. every day. People save cats' lives because they know how to yes. cut open a cat." And then, did y'all so, have to do like the path of like the blood cell through the cat? I think so. Yeah. I remember the, the kidneys are what really tripped me yes. out. It's just knowing like, oh, those because they like they're like tucked like, under and they're like attached yes. to the back and they're yes. real thick. There's some beauty with it. It was so disgusting, but like I'm glad but I was, I we did were it. like we were like because like our exams for like cat dissection or any dissection would have like oh they were so like basically it was four people in a group and it was like a uh, hundred questions. So like you your grade was the average of everybody that went individually. Yes, yes. So we'd have to individually take our test and like so I I got with the smartest girl in the class. I, I did that <laughs> immediately. So like my group, we were always good. And then like I remember the other groups were like horrible, but it wasn't. It was just like memorization. Like it wasn't that yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's like the cat was like lit. All right, Matt. That wraps up our twenty first date. Let's hop into Bonita's fan fiction, where you guys call in and we give you advice on your questions. Matt, you can answer the phone first. Oh, bring it on. Let's hear it. Do we have a call on the line? Bonita! <laughs> Matt King! I love you, mother <laughs> My question is, um, what are you looking forward to in 2024? What are some goals and aspirations you have? Um, yeah. I love y'all. And we love you. What was her name? Did she say her name? No. She didn't. Oh, well. I love the energy. Oh, what am I looking forward to in 2024? I really want to try. I want to travel. I want to travel more. Yes. I want to go to Korea. Yes. And I want to go to Sweden. Those are my top two locations that I want I to go to. I also want to travel. I want to go to Bali and I want to go to Europe. And I specifically want to go to London, but I'm scared because I, I heard Europe is kind of like, yeah. Um, it's, uh, uh, you'll like London. You really, really yeah. will. Uh, but it took me a while to like London. At yeah. first, like, I went and I thought, oh, this will be great. Everyone speaks English. But, People speak English, but like you kind of almost don't understand it. Yes. And their sense of banter is different than how yes. we're used to in America. So you're constantly like, what are you going to say? What? Yeah. What was that? And, and uh, every like customer service, they're not that nice. And mm. so you're constantly feeling like you're off offended. But or like, I also feel like that's just like a U.S. thing about the customer service because like we work here, for tips. We work for tips. So we got to kind of like suck dick. Also, I used to work in restaurants and when I was in college and I hated it when wishing on my worst enemy but people would come into the macaroni grill and act like they're at the ritz carlton yeah right Why are you all of a sudden walking into the restaurant acting like you're bill gates were you a server at the macaroni grill yes so wait, you could write your name upside down wait uh, didn't they do that with like crayons at the yeah, macaroni yeah, 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 grill yeah. you'd be like hey what's up my name is finita and they <laughs> I used would to write do this it upside thing. down i used to do the thing macaroni grill also had like terrible uh <laughs> just terrible logistics so like for instance there was a, a wine that was like the house wine that you didn't have to ring in to pour like we poured it table side right okay so like most of the times when you work in a restaurant if you ring in alcohol like you have to ring in alcohol for it to get served the wine you didn't have to do that so like i would have my friends come to macaroni grill and i would just bottoms up <laughs> bottoms up and they would just get drunk as because like they didn't keep tabs on the yeah. wine or the inventory also i remember my first shift at the macaroni grill i broke out in tears because it was my first so basically it was my first ever serving job, and they put me in the field my first day, my first shift. I had never served a day in my life. It was packed. It was so busy. I was, like, running around, and I ran into uh, – I had a, I did – I made a mistake, and I, I rang a card for a different table, right? But it was a quick uh, little uh, boy. Yeah. It was an easy fix, right? Uh-huh. And – my manager's like, you have to go tell the lady that you ran her car for a different table, but we've already voided it. So I went to, like, tell her that, and she cussed me out in front of the whole <sighs> restaurant. Like, went the f*** off. And, like, I literally just, like, ran into the back, like, having a panic attack and, like, was, like, bursting And you had to get the manager out? Yeah. Huh? Did you have to get the manager or? Yeah. She, yeah. she like, she was That's obviously, like, a slam. You got to smile, listen, <laughs> apologize, and then get the manager. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, like, I was, like, girl, it was, just, it was a mistake. Like, and, like, her family was there. Like, she was, like, you're, you're f***ing incompetent. You're, like, this is why you work at a restaurant and not a real job. And, like, she was, like, she was going in on me. And I'm, like, Man, girl, this is a macaroni grill. This is a macaroni grill. Chill it out. was a it was a forty dollar charge. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that we voided it. You have the money back. 
Like, maybe she just wasn't intelligent enough to understand the mistake that I made, yeah, but it wasn't. It happens. It You'll happens. get your money back. Like, dang. I, if you're gonna be, I'll give you the 40 in my, in my pouch. Yeah, if it's yeah. going to be that big of a, it is that serious. But, like, working in restaurants is, like, horrid. Um, oh, yeah. Like, I worked at Uncle Julio's. We had to memorize every single type of tequila. And it was, like, my first week. And I'm learning all these different types. Oh, Reposado, uh, Agave, Silver, Patron, blah, 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 blah. And I remember going around, and these people were asking for their drinks. And someone asked for a tea also. And I'm like, a tea also? What the hell is that? I'm going back, and I'm mm -hmm. typing in everything. And I'm like, tea also, tea also. What the is a tea also and they're it's like tea also <laughs> someone had ordered a tea before and i thought a tea also was like a fancy margarita at uncle Ooh, julio's also one of my things that i want to do in 2024 i want to run a 5k i've been on marathon tiktok lately yeah and i don't know if i'm gonna do it but i've been buying like running shoes well, i've been buying like, a running pack because, like i feel like like the marathon we're not i'm not i don't want to run a marathon because the marathon is like 29 miles yeah, yeah. i want to run a 5k because that's three miles i think i could like i think i could help it you do it how much do hey, you know how long it can take you to run just one mile no i haven't started running yet. i haven't started practicing for it Let's get started. You should do the couch to marathon method. That's what my friend Ben told me. Because yeah. it's like one day you start walking 10 minutes and then you run five and walk 10 and, and just like build it up. Build every it up. Day. You build could it totally up. do that. Yes. I think I can do it 100%. I'm going to come root for you. I'll make a sign yes. and everything. All right. Hello. Let's hear it. Hi, Benita. Hi, Matt King. I hope you guys are doing good. Oh my gosh. I just wanted to say that's when you I literally love your podcast so much. Oh my gosh. But um, I have a question and I need your advice. So basically, you came to the right um, place. I lost a friend that I was super, super close with, and I need your advice to how to get over it, how to get losing over a friend, because it was just going to be hard for me. And um, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. I will say a friendship breakup may damn, like, be worse than, like, like a regular break, especially if it's like a friend that you have like a deep relationship. It, it almost In feels a like history. Yes, it almost feels like like they're like dead. Like, no, fr friendship breakups are sometimes tougher than actual. Breakups yes, that's what I'm saying. Too. Like, like because friendship breakups, like, like they're just different. Yeah. Like this is a person that like you know, like like you love and you want the best for. Honestly, I don't. I feel like I've had some friendship breakups uh, that I've gotten over, but I think it just like it's like with any other breakup, it just takes time. You know, yeah. it's, it's gonna be hard to get over, but. It takes time being kind to yourself, and it's also – it is okay to be upset about yes. it and allowing yourself to be upset. I think sometimes a lot of time, even in real breakups, yeah. people want to fight against their emotions and mm -hmm. fight against their sadness, thinking that they need to be stronger than mm -hmm. it. Um, also, but it's okay like to be like sad. Social, Don't reach out, though. Yeah. End just it. leave it alone. There are so many, and you have to tell yourself, there are so many exciting things that are coming your way. Mm -hmm. People who are Preach. worth your time. Amen. People um, who will reciprocate your energy and take you further. Hallelujah. And who are on the same wavelength as you are. And, I, in you know, I've had many friend breakups, and it, it does suck, but... I look at the friends that I've surrounded myself yeah, with Yeah, like, you'll make new friends. Yeah. Like, you'll make new friends. And I feel like with social media, like, we have such an individualistic, like, culture where it's, like, you can't care about other people. So, like, you're weak if you're, like, sad about this. Like, no, like, some friendships are cool. But, like, I feel like, one, you'll make new friends. It's going to be hard. And you'll, you'll probably, you'll eventually get over it. But just have fun and do the things that you love. Yeah. And put that just energy out there into the world. And hopefully, and you can still think highly of that person yeah. you can wish them great yeah, they'll be dead to you. and they should be the same yeah. way to you you can be civil about it even if you run into them in the future you can treat it with grace mm -hmm. because when you treat it with that good of energy it's only going to come back to you with good things so, amen preach hello hi Benita. oh my god i love you girl and hey matt anyway okay. Benita. I just want to know, what is the biggest obstacle that you are facing this week, and how do you plan to overcome it? Love you, girl. Bye. A uh, biggest obstacle that I'm facing this week, <laughs> I think, is uh, for me, it's just working out and getting on that good grind before you go on holiday vacation. Because yeah. I know I'm really not going to be working out on vacation, but I want it to get in my body and get in yes. the groove of just making it a habit. Because I know if I start strong now, I may work out over the holiday yeah. break. But you're not going to. It's just, ugh, I'm not. Yeah. But. That's been my challenge this week is just getting that little bit of a pump, yep. getting that little bit of a trim going on because when you go back home and you see all your relatives, they want to be like, you look great. It's just that little bit of yeah, pump. Yeah. I can always feel it in my traps. That's where I'm always like. I think like, my biggest obstacle, oh, man, I'm so exhausted. Like, I'm so tired. My biggest obstacle is going to be getting some rest. I literally was on, went to the Bahamas last week, so I got my best friend a cruise for her birthday. Fun? So, yeah, so it was fun. And so I was on a cruise. I was on a boat. Didn't sleep because my bed, I 
took the sheet off. It was got concrete. <laughs> Bed was hard as a rock, so I didn't sleep. Then I got off the flight, and then I had to go to the premiere. Uh, yesterday, I met Timothy Chalamet. Um, and then my biggest obstacle this week, and I also have to leave on Saturday. I'm flying back to Alabama for Christmas. I'm, I'm just, gonna be there too. Oh my god! I'll be there 23rd through like the 27th. I will be there the 17th through the 27th. Okay, there might be an overlap. Bro, the 26th, we should just all go to Hamburger Heaven. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's I'll hook you up. It'll look good on. for free Come for on, me. Come on, man. Okay, they, I'm but, not going to lie because hamburger, the burgers, the burgers are a little pricey. <laughs> they are. They are, they are I, big, though. It's they inflation. are big. They hook my you up, aunt, though. My aunt loves their. They could. They do be skipping on the fries. Let me know, though, if anyone ever goes there that you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll, my I'll aunt loves up. their burgers. Um, okay. But that's my that's my biggest obstacle. I'm just trying to catch up on some rest. Can you nap easy? No. I'm, I, I can't nap at all. I have to be like. Me, there'll be times where I'm like, oh, like, okay, let's say, like, I'm getting sleep on the couch, and then I get up and go to my bed. I just ruin the moment. Mm-hmm. I can't go to sleep now. You just transition. And then sometimes, like, because of, like, what I do for work, my mind is always, like, moving. Like, I'm always, like. And you love the free time of, like, sitting there by yourself, yes. even though you know you should go to bed, but you're like, yes, but I love this so, free time yeah, I yes. have. Or sometimes I'm, like, thinking of new jokes. I'm like, oh, my God, we should do this on a podcast. Or, like, thinking about, like, oh, I need to pay this. I need to do this. I need to do this. Da-da-da-da. So, like, it's so hard for me to, like, shut my mind off mm-hmm. to go to bed because there's always something that I have to do or get done or think about, and I think way too much. Do you take uh, vitamins at all in the evening? I should, but I don't. You should take magnesium uh, glycinate. It's a really great uh vitamin Mm -hmm. helps calm you down it promotes better sleep it's not but it's not going to make you drowsy the next day because we all need like magnesium in us i love to take it right around the evening time i notice it calms me down Mm -hmm. and it makes me feel a lot more well see instead i can smell weed to get me sleep (laughs) (laughs) i do do that too i take a little el camino gummy a little half of the sleep one right before bed hit the the pin and that puts me on like a light all right maddie is this over it's closing time babe man it this has been a joy this has been a great holiday special a holiday special this has been amazing matt do you have anything upcoming that the people can be on the lookout for oh yeah wait uh, upcoming Uh, you know what i'm just i'm just just gonna promote my podcast we got zane and heath unfiltered we have good influences we and we have hoot and a half with matt king they're everywhere and anywhere where you can find podcasts not to stir drama what one of your podcasts but are you like a regular guest on the Zane and Heath podcast? Uh, yeah, I am usually, so or unless I'm out of town and I just. And so can't your do name's it. not in the title, why? Oh, because it's Zane and Heath show. I get paid per episode. I don't make the whole part of the revenue. Hey, at least you get paid. Yeah, I have my boundaries, and yeah. I'm there to support and yeah. help out my friends. You're so mad. I was trying to be messy. You're so you're such a light. Oh. I I love you to well, death. You are a gem, and I'm so proud of you. This podcast is amazing. The exciting things are coming for you. I already know. <laughs> they they try to count me out, but 2024, I'm telling y'all, stop hating on me and get on the winning team. Get so- on the gravy train early. Exactly. And everyone out there, hopefully you are having a great Merry Christmas. I know it's a tough time for a lot of people out there. Hopefully that this podcast here is a good, bright part of your day. If you came here because of me, go follow this podcast. Continue to watch all these episodes. Benita, you're amazing. Thank you, Matt. Merry Uh, Christmas. Happy happy holidays. holidays. Uh, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas. I wish you all the merriest, cuntiest Christmas ever. And thank you guys so much for supporting me. And I look forward to all the new things we have in the new year. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the Pass Your Bedtime YouTube channel. If you want to see more amazing episodes like this one with the amazing Matt King, I love you guys so, 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 so much. And I will see you next Monday. All right. Bye. Bye. Toodles.